Hey guys, how are you going? My name is Dom and today I'm going to be showing you how to generate HTML using JavaScript code. Okay, so these techniques right here are perfect for uh, building user interfaces dynamically using JavaScript or just simply doing any sort of HTML work within your JavaScript code. Now, also keep in mind that there are many different ways out there to achieve this. I'm going to be showing you these three today because one, I use them myself and two, um, these three are probably some of the most popular ways that people tend to, you know, generate HTML. Okay, so I'm going to run through each one here quickly before moving on to showing you each one in depth. So, the first one is building HTML element objects and appending them to some sort of parent element. Okay, so this one here is arguably the most efficient out of the bunch. Now, I say arguably because um, there's a bunch of research and articles online of people testing the performance and speed of this compared to things like inner HTML, but ultimately, at the end of the day, um, just use something that works for you and only worry about performance when it matters. So if you're doing a performance uh, critical application, then yes, consider these performance uh, issues, but if not, just do what works best for you. So. Um, the key benefit of this sort of technique is going to be easy access to the object straight away so you can easily add your event listeners, your classes, your attributes and things like that. The second technique is using the good old classic inner HTML. Um, I'm sure most of you guys know this already. If not, basically you're just inserting HTML uh, using a string. Okay. And lastly, we have the insert adjacent HTML. This one here is one of my favorites, and I also believe that um, not many people know about this. So it's actually very similar to inner HTML, but it's more powerful in that you can actually decide where your HTML goes uh, relative to a element that already exists. Okay, so this one here is super powerful, and it sort of uh, makes up for some of the disadvantages of using inner HTML. And lastly, just a side note, template strings are our friend, okay? So um, JavaScript template strings allow you to insert things like uh, variables or, or just basic expressions inside your string generation. That way you can easily basically build HTML strings. And I'm gonna see that very shortly. So for now, let's have a look at the first technique, building your HTML element objects and appending them. Okay, so this first technique here involves creating a HTML element object in the JavaScript and then appending it to an existing uh, parent element on the page. Okay, so as an example right here with my overview text, we're going to be adding a new list item to this list right here using this technique. Okay, so um, I've actually gone inside the JavaScript here and I've already created a new constant called UL and this simply refers to uh, the unordered list on my page which has the class of DC-Overview. So going inside the HTML, we can see I've got that UL right here and that is simply just all of the text which you just saw uh, in the browser. Okay, so um, we've got a reference to the parent unordered list right here. So how do we go about adding a new list item to that existing list? Well. We can make a new constant here called new list item equal to document.create element and then we can pass through here li. So basically what this new list item now is, it's basically just one of these. So we've simply created a new li tag in the JavaScript and called it new list item. You can pass through whatever tag you want inside this create element method and it's going to work the same way. Okay, so now we've got this ally, let's add some text to it. Okay, so down here we can just say new list item dot text content is going to be equal to I am a new uh, list item tag, something like that, right? Cool, so now we've got something like this where We've got the ally and it says right inside here, I am a new list item tag just like this. Now, one of the main benefits of using this technique is you're able to easily do things directly on the object. Okay, so for example, I can now say new list item dot add event listener. I can add my click event on here if I wanted to, uh, particularly helpful with buttons. Okay, for example, um, I can also say something like class list is going to be 
uh, you know, dot add, and I can say something like decode to simply add the decode class to my list item. So it'll turn into something like this, where it says class then decode. So we can see here, uh, this is the main benefit of using, uh, you know, this technique of creating the element directly. Okay, so um, now, in order to append the list item to the page itself, because currently all of this stuff is happening in the JavaScript only. So to actually get the new list item on the page itself, we have to simply say ul.appendChild, then pass through here new list item. So basically we're appending this new child element to the existing ul. So now if I save this, go back in the browser, refresh, we have this new ally on the page. So of course, if I inspect this, we've got the ally with the class of decode and it's all working perfectly fine. So that is your first technique right there. I encourage you to do things like new list item dot and just have a look at all of the different properties and methods you've got, you, um, you've got access to here. And this right here is really the main benefit of using this technique. You can easily access these properties and methods. Okay, that is your first technique right there. Okay, so moving on to the second uh, technique here using the inner HTML property. Okay, so I'm sure many of you guys have used this property before. If you haven't, don't worry, I'm still going to show you. Okay, now I'm going to be demonstrating two examples of this property. The first one is going to be modifying the existing HTML on an HTML element. Okay, and that is probably the most common use case for this property right here. And the second example is going to be uh, adding a new list item to that list, which I just showed you with the first technique. So we're going to be exploring that across all three. But first, let's modify some HTML using this property right here. So going back to the unordered list right here on the web page, we're going to be using inner HTML to modify the HTML of the second list item right here. So to achieve that, basically, we need to have access to the second ally right here in the JavaScript code. Okay, so going inside the JavaScript right here, um, we're going to make a second constant called existing, sorry, existing list item equal to document.query selector all. We're going to simply select uh, DC dash overview, then just say, get me every single direct descendant that is an ally of our UL element right there. And then pass through brackets and just say one to simply get the second ally inside the list. Okay, so we now have the existing list item in the JavaScript. So it's going to be as simple as just saying existing list item dot inner HTML is going to be equal to something like this, where we just say strong, then say something like I have been modified, something like that. Okay, so remember, with the inner HTML property, if you have an existing ally just like this, essentially, the inner HTML is everything inside the tag. So you're not modifying the ally part, only the inner HTML of your existing element. So if I save this, go back in the browser, refresh, we have the I have been modified on that second element right there. So that is your basics of the inner HTML property. Now, I want to quickly touch on the template strings before moving on to uh, adding a new list item. So. With this whole template string thing I mentioned earlier, um, if I go back inside here, if I want to uh, have some sort of expression or variable as part of my string here, so for example, if I say uh, you've visited uh, something like 56 times, okay, so just pretend this right here is um, just some sort of like, you know, hit counter or some sort of like visitor counter for a website. Um, this 56 is most likely going to come from a variable or some sort of expression. So you could do, um, you could have your double quotes here and just say something like plus, then just say num visits and then have the num visits in a constant, for example, something like this. And if I save this, go back in the browser, this works, right? So you have the 56 inside there using the plus to concatenate your string, okay? but you could also use template strings. Okay, so going inside here, let's change these double quotes to be the back tick near the one on your keyboard. Okay, just like this, right? 
So now, using these back ticks, we now have access to two things. The first thing is multi-line strings. I'm going to show you that shortly, but the second thing is going to be the ability to directly insert expression. So inside here, we can just say, for example, using a dollar sign, then curly braces, we can pass through num visits to simply inject that five, six from here inside the string. So save this back in the browser, refresh, and we have the same result five, six right there. But this time it's a little bit cleaner and easier to read. Okay. Now, you can also have multi-line strings here. For example, I can actually drop down and make this a little bit, you know, uh, I guess you could say clearer or a bit more structured, right? So you can use multi-line strings right here by using the template string. So this is why I encourage you, if you are using inner HTML or the next technique I'm going to show you, um, definitely try to use these template strings to give yourself um, a bit of a easier development experience. Okay, so anyway, let's have a look now um, at appending a new list item to the existing UL using the inner HTML property. So to achieve that, to add a new list item, okay, we need to change this code here to instead target the existing UL. So going back inside here, of course, we have all of this existing allies as a, um, you know, as direct descendants of the DC overview, we need to basically just append some new HTML to the existing HTML. Okay, so to achieve that, let's say ul dot inner HTML instead. So targeting the HTML of the parent. If I do this right, if I just keep it like that with an equals, go back in the browser, refresh, we lose everything. Okay, it's simply set a strong inside the UL. Okay, so to fix this, we simply say plus equals to append to the existing inner HTML. Okay, then of course, add your ally because now you're focusing on, um, you know, the actual ally itself and not the contents of the ally. So we need to basically just append a new list item to the existing inner HTML. Save this back in the browser, refresh, and now it's on the bottom here instead. Okay, so that is how to use inner HTML to add a new element or some new HTML to your existing, sorry, to your existing, uh, you know, unordered list. Okay, so that is your inner HTML property right there. But this technique right here, it does work, but you can actually do it in a bit more, um, a bit more of an elegant way by using the next technique, which I'm going to show you right now. All right, so lastly, we have the insert adjacent HTML method. Okay, so this technique here is, you know, it's it's very similar to inner HTML, but it is much more powerful when you want to add HTML compared to when you want to modify. Okay, so this one here is perfect for adding a new list item to the list right here using an HTML string. Okay, so going back inside here, when it comes to the insert adjacent HTML uh, method, okay? We need to essentially start on the UL, okay? So we need to say UL dot insert adjacent HTML. So starting on the parent right here, um, we need to say inside these brackets here, the first argument to this method right here is gonna be the insert position. So you've got four options when it comes to adding your HTML after begin, after end, before begin, and before end. So this right here is simply saying, where do you want your HTML string to end up? Okay, do you want it after your UL begins or after it ends? Do you want it before it begins or before it ends? So if you want to append a new, uh, some new HTML, you would use before end because you want to insert stuff before the end of your UL. If you want to insert HTML before the beginning of your UL, you would use before begin and then so on. So let's use before end in this scenario. Okay, then as a second argument, we've got to provide the HTML. So for example, we can just say something like ally um, inside here, ally something like uh, I am new. Save this back in the browser, refresh, and now we can see if we inspect the UL, we've inserted a new ally list item 
before the end of the UL. That is what this positioning is for. Let's change this to be after begin. After the UL begins, insert this HTML. So of course this one, refresh, it's going to be after it begins. So of course after it begins. Let's change this to be uh, before begin. Okay, so now let's just change this to be something like uh, strong um, outside of list. Okay, save this back in the browser, refresh, and now we can see we've got the strong tag outside or before the beginning of the UL. So this is why the insert address in HTML method is powerful. It doesn't entirely replace in an HTML because obviously. Um, you need to still be able to modify existing HTML in place. So um, this is mainly for when you want to insert HTML instead of modifying it. Okay, so and that is your insert address in HTML uh, method right there. It's also worth noting that you can do the exact same thing uh, for different uh, for different use cases. Okay, so you can say here um, insert adjacent element. Okay, then instead of putting a string here, you would put your list item object, which I showed you in the first technique. Okay, so you can also experiment with that, or you can say uh, insert adjacent text, um, and you can do the same thing, but this time it's text only, which means I can say, for example, um, before it begins, I can say strong, hello, right? But because it's just text, you won't get the strong HTML interpreted by the browser. So if I save this here, go back in the browser, refresh, we have the actual HTML being, you know, displayed as opposed to actually working. So um, you have those three methods right there. Obviously, we focused on the insert adjacent HTML. Okay, so that is your third technique right there. And that is three techniques for generating HTML using JavaScript. If today's video helped you out, drop a like and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next video.